Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia aka Crafty Owl here with a project for Not Too Shabby. Today I'm going to be using the newest stamp and die bundle, Critter Pops, to create a quick and cute card. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Earlier this month, I shared how I created some shrinky dink earrings using the new Critter Pop stamp set. I have a picture up on screen now and I will have that video linked in the description box below if you want to check it out. Today I'm going to be using that same stamp set but I'm going to be using the coordinating dies as well to create just a quick easy card. I'm pretty sure you're going to fall in love with this stamp and die bundle so I do have it linked in that description box below for you to check out after the video. One thing I love about the stamp and die bundle is not only do you get the dies for those main images, but also for each of the sentiments. And it's a super added bonus that it already comes with a little magnet sheet for you to keep these all in a safe space. Let's take a look at some of the other products I'll be using today and then we'll get started. Not only will I be using the Critter Pop Stamp and Die Bundle, but I'm also using a couple other items from the shop. Here in the middle, I will be using some scraps from the Dots for Summer paper pad. This is a set of brightly colored pattern papers. On one side, you have some polka dots that are large, and on the other side, you have tiny polka dots. I just love the bright, fun colors and how you can choose which side to use. There's also a Dots for Spring paper pad that's basically the same, but they are pastels. Not only does Not Too Shabby sell their own line of wonderful products, but they have many other brands in the store. One of the items I got there is this CC Designs Color Splotches stamp set, and I will be adding a little bit of extra color with this on my card today. Once you're done here, if you want to go shopping over at Not Too Shabby, I do have links for these products and a special coupon code that you can save 10% on most items. Make sure to check out my description box for all of that information. As I add any more products or tools during the process, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, don't forget, if I leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started, I'm going to be stamping my image and I got out a scrap of cardstock that will work with alcohol markers, some Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and for the image I am choosing the little bunny critter pop. I place it in the lower right hand corner of my stamping tool and then because it is a new stamp before I inked it up with that memento, I rubbed those manufacturing oils off with my fingers before inking it up and stamping it for the first time. Now because my pad is a little dry and this stamp is new, I did stamp it twice to get a nice solid black image. I'm going to be doing some basic coloring today with some tri-blend alcohol markers. I will list each of the colors I used in the description box below if you are interested. I'm going to start by giving the bunny just a little bit of a gray shading. I add a line of gray around the outside of the bunny's face and then bring in a colorless blender and blend that to the inside. Just kind of smooth it out and lighten it up. I use the same gray for the bunny's ears except for the little inside part there and on the cheeks where I used a light pink. I am going to share a little bit more of the coloring with you but if you want to skip ahead about a minute you can see the finished piece.
Once the image was all colored, I brought back in my Misty where I had actually left that stamp exactly where it was in the beginning and I inked it up one more time with that black ink and just re-stamped over the image. Sometimes I think if I kind of color over the stamped lines when I'm using the markers or if they fade a little bit, this helps to darken that up again. While I had all of my stamping stuff out, I decided to go ahead and stamp the sentiment, which I am using Happy Summer from the set, and I got out a scrap of black cardstock, and I will be stamping with Versamark and heat embossing it with the Detail White Embossing Powder. Now, because I do want this to be a nice crisp white, I stamped it up twice with that Versamark ink before pouring on my powder. Then I melted that, which I always think is magic. Usually I let my tool heat up about 30 seconds before I bring it to the stamped image. Off camera, I cut up some scraps from that Dots for Summer paper pad, and these are half inch wide by six inch tall strips. I did decide I was going to use the bigger polka dots for these, and to be my base for the strips, I cut a scrap of printer paper to four and a quarter inches wide by two and a quarter inches tall. Now you could always add just a sheet of adhesive on here if you wanted, but I just added some ATG a little bit at a time as I was placing each strip. To get that first one in place, I did use the dots on the back because they're kind of in a straight line to get as close to a 45 degree angle as I could. Then when that was in place, I continued placing the rest of the strips, and when I needed more of one of the colors, I just trimmed it off from the beginning and added it there to the end. After all the strips were in place, I took my nonstick scissors and I cut off all the excess. Now off camera, I also trimmed down my sentiment strip to about a half an inch tall, and I cut down the rainbow strip to two inches tall. I brought in the coordinating die set and got out the die for the bunny. I held it in place with a couple pieces of removable tape while I ran it through my die cut machine. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be adding some more color to this card with that splotches stamp set. To get an idea of where I'll need to stamp those at, I did bring in the rainbow strip and the die from the Critter Pop, and I lightly traced where the top of the pattern paper strip would be and where the Critter Pop would go so I would know where to place each of those stamps. Speaking of that, now it's time to stamp out the splotch. I chose the one on the lower right, and I will be stamping it in a rainbow of inks. Because I have the outline where the Critter Pop will go, it gives me a good idea of where each stamp is. I ink up in the rainbow order and go around the outside. I do kind of rotate it every once in a while, and I try to make sure that the part showing outside of my pencil line is as even as possible all the way around. Now because I traced on the inside of that Critter Pop die, when I place my Critter Pop on it later, it will cover that line up. Now all of the pieces were ready, so it's time to assemble the card. The rainbow stripe paper gets added to the bottom of the card front, and then I added some adhesive to the back of the sentiment strip. I did kind of figure out where I wanted the sentiment to go, and then after I had that in place, I trimmed the excess off the ends with those non-stick scissors. To get the bunny critter pop on there, I did add some foam tape to the back of that piece, and I placed it over that pencil outline and popped up on the card. And here are some finished looks at the card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. 
I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.